Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. The purpose of this video is going to be elucidate the reasons as to why society is so frail, why civilization is so frail. There, for a lot of people who are not preppers, even people who are preppers, myself included, we'll get passing moments of you know, why do we do this? What, what's it all worth? What's the point? There'll be some days when I, when I just am in total disbelief of the idea that civilization will ever collapse. So I wanted to embark on an analysis of sorts. And as an example, I want to talk about one of the most base level rudimentary inventions of mankind. I'm going to use this as a as a way to conceptualize how frail our society actually is by taking one of the most simplest things mankind has created, putting it under the microscope and seeing exactly what must be required for that thing to be made. And as an example, I want to use a paperclip. Possibly not the simplest of things, but definitely ranks up there. And a lot of people would, uh, you know, when they think of civilization, they think of computers, and machines, you know, complex machines with all these various moving parts and microchips and nanotechnology and biochemistry, you know, all sorts of crazy far out stuff like that, which is very intricate. But civilization really isn't that. I can't remember what the quote was exactly, but something to the effect of uh, genius is just taking a lot of little steps. It's not big leaps. It's always little tiny steps, you know, or great things are created through millions of little steps as opposed to one giant leap. The paper clip. So what does it take to make a paper clip? Well, you need the iron ore to make the metal that the paper clip's made out of. I don't know what they're made out of, personally. Some kind of metal, anyways. And so, in order to do that, you need metal. Big one. Huge, huge part of the production process. So, how do you do that? Well, you get mines. You need mines. And in order to have these mines, typically these mines are, you know, located uh, far outside of uh, urban areas. So you need workers, of course, to work within these mines, and these workers need isolation work camps, typically. And, of course, uh, the workers need to eat. You know, you can't just... Uh, it's only in the modern day that you can have a bunch of people in an isolation camp eating, thanks to modern agriculture and all the things that come along with that. Um, so, you need agriculture. So what do you need for agriculture? Well, you need farmers, you need pesticides, herbicides. Unfortunately, now, they've got us dependent on genetically modified stuff, so there's a biochemistry aspect to it. Big agriculture is a huge thing, and whether you're a Malthusian enthusiast or not, uh, you have to admit that agriculture has played a role in population growth, and all Malthusian ideas are, essentially a guy named Thomas Malthus predicted that a society can only grow when its means of producing food expands. If the means of producing food ceases, then there won't be enough food to support the population and the population won't grow and that's exactly why the populations went from 1 billion to 7 billion over the course of two centuries. Anyways, so you have agriculture. With agriculture you need to manufacture the machines that collect this food because the only way the miners can have food that's affordable is if these machines that run on gasoline that I'll get to next uh, can you know run and combine harvest this food so they harvest that food and that food gets shipped in trucks to the miners the trucks require gasoline they require oil they require maintenance they require parts they require billions of paper clips, in a sense, in order to function, just in themselves. We're still talking about a paper clip here. 
those miners need health care. They need, and with health care comes the need for health professionals. With that comes the need for education. So you have people who earn doctor, doctoral degrees, uh, sorry, medical, medical degrees, nurses, specialists, people who have to go to school for decades in some instances to become a certified specialist in their area. You need a monetary system as a means of exchange in order to trade for that paperclip. The only way any of this functions at all is if there is some mode of commerce, some shared agreed upon mode of commerce that everybody can agree on. Otherwise, nobody gets paid, nothing moves. What else do you need? Well, you need the education system, you know, so you need a grade school, you need high school, you need universities, you need, and we're still talking about a paperclip here, just one, this is what's required to make one paperclip and get it into your pocket at a reasonably affordable price. In order to make this paperclip, typically raw materials are taken from a certain country and they're shipped to another country to convert those raw materials into a finished product. So you need a manufacturing sector. And typically, unfortunately, we live in an age where people can be exploited. And a lot of people in, a lot of the products that are made in China are made by people who are exploited for low wages, who work 16 hour days in factories, sweatshops, for very little pay and very shitty working conditions. That's just the reality. So you need that in order to, otherwise that paperclip is going to cost you a dollar and no one's going to be able to afford it. Thanks to, you know, how cheap uh, production is, uh, it only costs a couple cents, if that. So anyways, that uh, paperclip gets made up and packaged, so you need all the packaging, you need to deforest. Some area in order to make the packaging, you need the inks and the dyes and that whole process. And then you need it shipped overseas via cargo ships or airplanes. So you need docks and airports and seaports and uh, all that kind of stuff. And then, of course, you have the transport to the retail aspect of things, which is done usually by 18 wheeler semis. Uh, you know, and then perhaps even broken down even smaller into smaller cargo trucks that would distribute things more regionally or municipally. And then of course you need retailers who will make a store that you can buy that paper clip from. And of course those stores need employees. Their employees need labor laws, so you need lawyers, you need politicians in order to debate these labor laws and debate the various working rights of people. And of course, uh, all of this requires some level of authority or governance, of course, with respect to politics, but also on the law enforcement bureaucratic end of things, you need people to police this whole situation. You need some sort of rule of law to be in place so that that paperclip can safely fasten those important documents you have together. All of this stuff has to be there in order for this, and that's only a, a fraction of it. You know, I haven't even talked about roads. You need roads to do all this. You know, you need all sorts of international standards agreed upon, uh, codes and stuff like that in order to ensure that the paperclip can get from its place of origin to you. Um... What else do you need? Yeah, I mean, just it. What I'm trying to say is that the smallest, most rudimentary part of civilization implies the whole civilization. If any part of that chain, that process, is not there, <clears throat> if any part of it is too weak or, you know, un, in, unable to basically perform its it's uh, part of the process, then you're not going to get that paperclip. 
Now, that's not to say that, okay, if uh, a shipping truck broke down that you're not going to get the paper clip. Of course, it'll be made up for by some other aspect of the system. But I use this example because a lot of people, especially my partner, for instance, she really, you know, and a lot of people don't uh, appreciate the sophistication that goes into us being able to go into a store and buy food. All the things that have to line up for that to happen, just a multitude of things have to line up for that to happen. And think of yourself thrown into nature without without any of that, you know. Most people are, it's going to hit them so hard as to how, <clears throat> how naked they are without this civilization that we have and they're not going to realize it until it's all gone because they just think that things are supposed to be a certain way maybe they think that you know paper clips grow on paper clip trees obviously not literally but people forget all the steps that have to happen all of the you know um, all the little millions of little tiny things need to even out you know that guy has to come into work that day in order to fulfill his role in order for him to do that he needs to have seen the doctor you know I mean there's just a multitude of things and so if one part of the system is compromised it may create a cascading effect which will could effectively uh, a domino effect if you will destroy the whole system and that's why 9-11 conspiracy or not that's why it had such an effect on uh, the international sea. Because just like a fuse in a car, you know, if there's a fuse that, you know, controls a vital function of a car, one little fuse, you pull that fuse, the car doesn't run. You know, the ignition doesn't start or whatever. One little fuse. So, we live in a very frail society and as as strong and as resilient as it may be when everything's working properly you remove a few of those things from the equation you know let's say there's a pandemic 10% of people don't show up to work people say well it's only 10% yeah but that 10% who don't show up to work that affects something else which affects something else and then more people don't show up for work you know, so it starts out, something that starts out small can have a snowballing exponential effect. We live in a, we live in a very delicate world right now and all of the structure that it requires needs to be there in order for us to wake up every morning and live out our day as we have it planned today. But just think about if you had to go in the wilderness, you know, um, could you, could you make a paper clip from raw materials? You know, I'm just trying to get people thinking about, you couldn't, you know, yeah, some bushcrafters probably could design something, but Never anything that's as effective as that one little paper clip. Never gonna find it in nature. And you could get some pine woods, some, uh, some spruce pitch, some sinew from an animal, make yourself uh, a bow. But you can't make a gun. Need gasoline you gotta go and get the oil for the gasoline I mean so many people don't realize and this is all basic stuff for preppers I realize that but just when I see how hopelessly dependent we've become and really for me uh, Western civilization is like an old man on life support or an old woman what have you it's a person who's on life support because if any part of this system is compromised, we can't live, we can't eat. The stores, I know it seems like there's a lot of food in the stores, and this is the, this is the deception, is that you go into a Costco or a Walmart, you know, it's just wall to wall packed with stuff, 
you know, and people think, how could this stuff, how could this ever collapse? You know, how could it ever stop? But all of that stuff, it might seem like a lot of stuff, but there may only be 100 boxes there. Yeah, it's 100 boxes, but 100 people pass through there. Those stores are restocked every few days. Every few days, most major retailers are restocked. Completely, front to back. So, this veneer of civilization is very, very thin. And when I see built people building houses out in the suburbs, you know, and planning and spending $500,000 on these houses, you know, do what you want, but you could at least spend 20000 and outfit it with some sort of solar power, uh, maybe some geothermal options, something like that, something to make it remotely self-sufficient. I mean, if you're spending that much money anyways, then you ask people why they don't do it, and they say, oh, it's expensive. I mean, you just spent half a million dollars that you don't have on a house, and you're not willing to go the extra little mile to not only save yourself money but potentially safeguard yourself against shit hits the fan it's just stupid the level of how dependent people are on this system and nobody recognizes it's not nobody preppers we recognize it but very few people want to think about that all the conveniences of what we've come to know need all that I just talked about to happen. That's just for one paperclip. That's not even for microprocessors, and fiber optic cables, and uh, you know combustion engines. I mean, that's a whole another level of sophistication. Rocket science. We're talking about paperclips. Most people will not know how to fasten two pieces of paper together when shit hits the fan. I think a lot of people in the back of their minds entertain the delusion that the stores are still going to be open. I think I've seen it on uh, uh, a TV show called Survivors, the older one, the one from the 70s. There's a remake also that I did a review on, but the older one, and one of the girls... You know, shit has hit the fan, and the girl said, the guy said, oh, we're going to run out of this particular, I can't remember what it was, this particular uh, stuff. And she said, oh, well, we can just go to the store. And the guy's like, no, you don't realize it. There is no more store. You know, nothing is going to be manufactured from raw materials anymore. So I hope I've driven the point home for people who aren't aware of or people who are just coming into the prepping thing as to because nobody's going to be there to save you nobody's going to be there to provide you with paper clips and thumbtacks and all the other bare bones conveniences of civilization you're going to be on your own to do that there will be no store and there may be no store Not the kind that you're thinking about anyways. We may well enter some post-consumer scavenging off the remnants of the old world type society where it's back to reset, it's back to zero. What would you do in that instance? Would you be ready for that? Lots of people will say you can't be ready for that. Maybe you can. Maybe you can only prepare so much stuff. Maybe you can only have so many skills. But for those people who think that this is God-given, who have this entitled idea that all that we've come to know, all the comforts and amenities that we've come to enjoy are natural and are just always going to be there and should be there. Should is the big question. You're living a pipe dream, man. So anyways, that's all I got to say about this issue. Let me know what you think about this issue. Thanks for watching. Canadian Prepper